Good morning, and welcome to Morning Gospel Fuel with Mr. G. It is Saturday, August 7th, the 18th Saturday of Ordinary Time, and it is the feast day of St. Sixtus II, and he was martyred. Uh, he was Pope. Uh, I forget which number of Pope he was, but I know he was Pope during the, uh, like for only two years before he was martyred. Uh, so they, of course, he was killed for the faith. Um, in the year two, 258 A.D., um, so pretty early on, and he was martyred along with seven deacons of the church, in which one of those was St. Lawrence, who was uh, a more popular saint, I guess. He was one that was roasted um, to death. Um, so yeah, today is their feast day. Um, and so since they're martyrs, they don't necessarily always have a patron saint of whatever it is. So... Anyway, today's gospel is from Matthew chapter 17, verses 14 through 20. Let's begin in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. When they, came to the, when they came to the crowd, a man approached, knelt down before him, and said, Lord, have pity on me, or have pity on my son, for he is a lunatic and suffers severely. Often he falls into fire and often into water. I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Jesus said in reply, O faithless and per perverse generation, how long will I be with you? How long will I endure you? Bring him here to me. Jesus rebuked him, and the demon came out of him. And from that hour, the boy was cured. Then, then the disciples approached Jesus in private and said, Why could we not drive it out? He said to them, Because of your little faith. Amen, I say to you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. All right, so we've got a, a great gospel, another connection to the mustard seed parable that we all know, um, and also the mountains, of moving the mountain from there to there. You know, if we say to this mountain, jump, it would move. Um, and, and you can see Jesus is not happy. Uh, with his disciples, uh, you know, because he doesn't say nice words, because the, the disciples, Jesus' closest followers, tried praying, tried praying for this lunatic boy, <clears throat> and they couldn't get the job done, and they're wondering why. Um, and Jesus said in reply, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long will I be with you? How long will I endure you? That's kind of demeaning. Um, because he's, he calls them faithless and he calls them perverse. Um, and just saying that you know, they've got a problem with their faith. They're, they're not strong enough. And he's like, because I would, you know, you would, if, Jesus, if someone were to say that to you, it's like you are faithless, even though you are literally walking and being with Jesus all day, every day. And, they, and Jesus, your follower, your leader says how faithless you are. And he says, and he throws another shot at him. He's like, how long will I endure? How long will I endure you? How long do I have to be with you? Almost as if Jesus is, you know, it's a constant challenge, you know, of Jesus challenging their faith, of even saying, well, like almost saying, hey, I'm ready to be with God the Father in heaven because these dudes down here, they're not strong enough in their faith and I'm getting worn out. And uh, it's always interesting like, so this event takes place, but then Jesus, after he heals them, like, because the, the disciples are curious. Like, how come you could do it, but I can't? Um, you know, how come, you know, and how often do we get in that battle? You know, how come they get this and I don't get it? Um, and we always kind of get selfish and stuff. But then Jesus went back and, and took them in a private room and told them, whatever. You know, oftentimes, whenever Jesus takes the disciples to the private room, we Christians in Scripture don't really know for sure what all took place. Um, so that in itself causes us to say, hey, we just got to have faith and trust um, in, in, in not only our faith and our religion, but, all, and, but most importantly, God the Father. And that's the, that's the challenge uh, for today is how, you know, we say um, we have a big faith. You know, we say we're faithful. We say we believe. We, we say we um, have faith the size of a mustard seed and just trust God can do it all. But do we really? Um, that's the challenge. 
do we really believe that? Do we really have the faith? Um, and knowing, you know, there, I, I was at a prayer group one time. A quick story that I'll be done. Because <clears throat> the challenge is we need to improve our faith. Um, and one of this, I was praying with some gentleman in Dayton. And then after we got done, then we were like kind of sharing different things. And he was, he brought this up of saying like how, how we always, we always want more faith. You know, it's almost like, and he said as if we treat faith as like, there's an end point um, of saying like, Lord, if I reach this level of faith, I've reached it. I can't possibly have any more faith. Um, I've reached the end. But there's no end point. I taught math. So there's, it's a segment versus a line. So this, a lot of us treat, you know, we need to get the, to this faith level. And then it stops and we'll be good. We'll be at peace. We'll be at rest. We'll, we'll, we'll have all the answers. You know, we'll, we'll be happy forever, yada, yada, yada. But faith isn't like that. There's no end point. We want to keep climbing and climbing and climbing and getting a higher and higher faith. And I think that's the challenge for all of us is you know, not getting down on ourselves and we feel like maybe we, we don't have a strong enough faith because we're not supposed to. We're always called to improve it every single time, every single day, every moment of our day of trying to go through that continuous line, knowing that our faith will never reach the pinnacle until we're in heaven. Um, so... It's just a challenge every day to keep proving, improving, improving, improving. So God bless. Keep it real. Amen. <clears throat> Father, Son, and Spirit, amen.